Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Welcome to another round of Knowledge Labs. And we have another amazing guest, Veronica Lanza. How are you? All the way from Peru. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you to WebStop. And thank you for this amazing initiative, with, which is the Knowledge Labs. I have uh, follow some episodes and it's really interesting and it's so nice to to meet new colleagues all around the world <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely and um it's just exciting to have for the first time as, as, a, as a guest we actually have a videographer so again this is one of the things that we're trying to do at knowledge labs is we're not just sticking to one genre we're not just sticking to photography we're not just sticking to wedding photography we really try and diversify our guests so that the clients that we have can really get a full breadth of who they are, what they do, you know, what they specialize in, whether it's drone, anything else. So lovely to have a videographer. I'm excited about this because I'm not, I don't, I don't call myself a videographer. Obviously we've done some video before, but it's, I'm, I'm more of a photographer. So I'm, I'm personally really excited to just have a discussion with you about the videography side of things. Obviously we'll discuss the photography, but in a nutshell, um, how are you? How are things in Peru? I know, obviously, with COVID, we don't, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I still feel like we should talk about it for a few minutes. How is everything going in, uh, in the country? Uh, we are facing uh, another crisis because we went yeah. out from um, uh, uh, Golpe de Estado, um, a civil war, not civil war, like a taken of the coup d'etat. I don't know how you say yeah. it. No, a coup d'etat. No. Yep. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so we had like a very quick new president and actually now we're facing the real elections and there yep. is all an extreme uh, right uh, wing uh, politic uh, Goodness or an, an extreme left wing. So we are in this. So there's, there's no middle. Everything's everything's extreme left yes. and right. Goodness me, that's not only for the COVID situation, which is very difficult here, as you know, health issues are a really basic problem of Peru. So yeah, yeah. along with the pandemic, it's very difficult for people to access uh, hospital or health yeah. uh, service all over the country. No, And uh, yeah. For what concerns our job or our our sector, I think it's like a big push to, you know, to to improve creativity, to like, you no, know, be able to spend more time like planning or thinking or you know doing things without moving, unless whether now things are changing because they they open up almost all the productions and photographs. So so that was going to be one of my questions. Obviously, I know I, I've been reading obviously about the different countries. I know Peru got hit pretty hard with the second wave. I didn't realize that they're opening up production already. Do you do you do you yourself feel comfortable doing productions on on a medium scale? I guess if if you if you can call it that, because I've obviously seen your work and the kind of work that you do. That you know you don't just have an, always one person with you. It can be on a larger scale. It can be on set. So you need more people around you. Are you comfortable with what's going on in terms of starting that up? Yeah. How, how do you feel about I, that? I live in a bubble. Um, <laughs> I'm Italian. I mean in Peru, but I live in a bubble, which means that I don't really follow television uh, like news and newspaper. Otherwise, yeah. I would be terrified of going out and having a walk. So right. I guess that by basic uh, protection, you know, like the mask. And uh, of course, if it's, uh, I have been, um, you know, participating in um, like cinematography and, and uh, commercial production, which are the yeah. biggest scale here in Peru. And both are very careful with all, you know, the test, like the COVID test before getting into I was, I was going to ask, yeah, do you need to get, I presume you have to get tested pretty much all the time <laughs> and your crew. Yes all, the, yes, all the time, all the time. But uh, yeah. sometimes the, uh, it happened this, I heard, I heard, I just heard that it happens. Uh, they buy like really cheap tests. So just to pass it. it. All the crew got got uh, you know uh, with covid but uh, fortunately nobody really felt very sick no but right. this yeah. happen also so it, you have really to to invest in 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 health and in prevention covid yeah. prevention understood well for for those that don't know 
let's say this is the first time that they've met you. This is the first time that they, they, they're getting to know who you are. Do you have something, you know, if someone's never met you before, how would you describe yourself, what you do? Maybe you can, you can share some of the work that you, that you have. Take, yes. take it away. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> for the people who don't know me, which I think are um, a lot of people. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Very... <laughs> I think a lot of people know who you are and what you do. I am very multi multifunctional. I mean, I am basically doing any kind of production since photography uh, until filmmaking, taking part also in the um, film industry here in Peru. I have uh, worked uh, for very small brand until very big brand till I don't yeah. know, Claro. Next week I have a shooting with Adidas for a yeah, campaign nice. that is called Run for the Oceans and then making the photographic campaign of it. Then I, and on Monday I have a commercial, I will fly a drone for Claro, which is the team, the team, telephone yep. company. Mm -hmm. um, and I also worked for very big events, such as the Olympic game of Rio de Janeiro. In 2006, I've been covering the-, the Yeah, Open I saw that, that was great. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. that was great, really. And uh, it was really amazing to, you know, I, I can still remember when I went down the Maracana on the field. And yeah. it was the first day that the press present the photographers, no? So you have like, I was the only woman among 25 of the best photographers of the world. That oh my goodness. Allowed, allowed to be ah. part of the ground, you know, because there is photographer on the ground, photographer on the, on the stadium, and everybody have a really small space to to move but uh, i was working for the for balich which is the which has been the director no of the all the open yeah. ceremony. so he, he 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 chose me and another italian guy to make his uh, cover but all the other were writers were people from you know that's insane <laughs> so that it was all a really huge guy with a lot of cameras and i was like Oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really like emotional, no? Because you're starting to, to, to hear the minus 10, minus eight, no? And the, the, oh the yeah, stuff. the build up. And the guy yeah. was like, don't worry for me too. This is my 20th uh, Olympic games. Like some, oh some my God. <laughs> wow. Like, okay. <laughs> but it's always emotional. So it's okay. It's, it's not important that it's uh, your first one. <laughs> No, no but I'm, I'm still shocked i'm still shocked by your statement that you were the only woman that that, that, on that just that on the ground that sounds that on sounds field, ridiculous yes because... no i understand but it's still i still find that a weird statistic in today's world i would think i, I would have I didn't even cross my mind <laughs> I don't know a lot has changed in five years but uh, yes there were not many women at all no, that's um, I mean, that's maybe the major the major broadcaster, no? Like, I don't know. Is yeah, BBC, it, Reuters, Reuters, ESPN. BBC. But right, it's right. very not so common to. It's you know, it's like the film industry. There is always um, major a more of a barrier. A major number of uh, male of uh, men in the industry, and because it always has been like this, and just recently more women are you know getting into photography and video maker right. and filmmaker and cinematography and so slowly slowly they're trying to get into the into the field <laughs> a little bit like what i did in maragana no it was it was nice i mean i think it's important did you feel so, did you feel that there was any discrimination during that time no, no, no. or you or were they sort of wondering why you were there and I, I find that just no, so ridiculous. I had a really a big fight, like not with words, neither with uh, hands, but like mentally, because there <laughs> is one person who is all the time for uh, during all the ceremony and all the rehearsal looking at you and all the 24 photographers there, not to move an inch from where he he, he told you to, to be. Oh, so this is so like the organizer. Because uh, also Rio was really like, um, huge uh, organization with you know, thousands of uh, extra yeah. actors dancers so they're moving all around and you have to move a little bit to get that angle. of course yeah yes. which and um so, so let's talk really Italian, i have to say that i didn't <laughs> respect so much the rules and that made me 
made me have all this beautiful picture because I didn't stay on the field. I went inside Everyone. there and I could have various angles where whether other photographer couldn't. So let's let's talk gear. What what were you shooting on at the time? Canon, 5D, yeah, probably, time, 5D Mark IV? No, at the time it was a 5D Mark III. I, I had oh, okay. two, two 5D Mark III with uh, um, like a um, Grand Angular. I forgot my English. Like a 1635 <laughs> yep. and yep. Uh, um, a 25, 24105. 24170. Yeah, and then I had like a big zoom, a 72000. And yeah. also 50 millimeter, but I never use it. I I mostly use the wide angle and the, the zoom because yeah, I would think for something like that you would not be using primes too much. You you wanna you wanna have that flexibility of the zoom lenses that you can be in one place and get multiple shots without having to change lenses all the time because so much is going on, so much is happening around you. Yeah. You need to be very reactive, I, I would think. Totally, totally reactive. And also my colleague which is the, a crazy, which is another ambassador, I've right? stopped gear. He's, yeah. um, he was my, he, he's Italian too, and he's following many Olympic games. He, we went together up in the Maragana, and he's like, yeah, yeah. watch me back. So I was like, okay, what are you doing? No, no, I'm just fixing, I'm just uh, <laughs> putting the camera there, and I program it for one week when there was the opening ceremony, starting to shoot like in- uh, Oh, time-lapse. Time yeah, yeah. Yes. So he's very mountain expert, you know, so he has to know all the grip and stuff to do it. And he left it just in the center of the upper uh, section. Yeah. Yeah. Upper, upper area of the, and at some time there was a guy of security he's like, uh, what are you doing here? Like, no, nothing. I'm just waiting for, uh, for my colleague. We're just seeing setting up setting up the shot <laughs> and he was there on his knees with all the security cables like fixing the camera and how did there. he how, how did he deal with the battery because obviously if he's leaving there for a week shooting probably what every 10 i don't know every minute no, every 10 seconds just, or um switch it on the day of the ceremony and because ah. it's the time lapse he was saying to the camera just shoot yeah every, every 10 seconds yeah every 10 seconds for like four hours, I guess, I guess the battery lasted and he had uh, two extra batteries, no? It was a Canon too, so. Yeah, Canon batteries, I've always, they, they always do a pretty decent job of lasting a long time. I, uh, the, the phase, I, I'm, I shoot on the phase and that's takes, it drains a lot quicker. Um, but do you have, um, you had something presented for us that you can maybe share some of the work that, you, that yeah, you've done I or? Think, uh, it would be awesome. <laughs> I don't know. It would, it would be interesting uh, to share my reel, my video yeah, reel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some of the documentary, mini documentaries that you've done, as well as documentaries. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's continue talking gear um, a little bit more. So, when you're doing video, what is your preferred? Are you? I, I know there's two camps. There's an RE camp. What well, three camps? There's the RE, the Reds, and then you know Super 35s, everything else that's more sort of the DL DSLRs, the Sony's. Where do you fit in? How do you choose? Is that the client that's deciding we really want to have this kind of look? We want to then you go for an R, um, RE Alexa Mini LF or a Red Komodo. How do you choose the gear and all that stuff? Is that dictated by you or the client? Mm, yes, when you, you work for in commercials or, or in movies, of course, uh, the director of photography chooses suggest the camera mm -hmm. you would like to shoot on, but it's always a question of budget. 
Whereas yeah. for my production, where I have a cl um, clients, my own clients, so I don't have to go through, um, you know, huge budget and, and discuss it mm -hmm. with several areas. It's just more direct. Uh, if yeah. I can, I, I, you know, I, I, I go for a red or or for a Harry, you know. But uh, most of the time, I I shoot with a with a Sony. Yeah, uh, seven and a half. Okay, yes, and mm -hmm. it's, it's doing pretty well with the uh, size lenses, and it's really, um, you know, very handy for all the difficulties of uh, of my kind of work because I rarely yeah. do indoor or or kind of um, set work. Most of the time, it's outdoor. Uh, yeah. you know you have to travel with it you have to be like not always not all, all the time it's you can produce it so you have to just register what is going on and then yeah. need to be need to be flexible and to be fast and yeah. I don't have to <clears throat> of, uh, of producing for example the other day i went uh, for to film a new sailing boat that they just deliver here in Peru. It's the first time this selling boat comes to Peru. It's called the Sunfast 3300. I don't know if anybody here <laughs> it's it's a passionate about sailing. And um, you are on another yacht, little yacht, you know, that follows yeah. um, the sailing and you have to go to be very weak. You, you cannot use a tripod because the boat is too much movement. Mm -hmm. So I use a stabilizer. Uh, which is, can be a Ron you know, or a crane. Uh, well, and I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that because I obviously with this, the beauty with the Sony is that you can just put it on a Ron and Ron and 2S. You can, you can have it on some sort of gimbal head where you can get into certain environments that you just can't get to with a larger camera with you know much larger lenses. So it, it really depends, I guess, on the kind of work that you're doing and the environment that you're in. Um, that probably will dictate, like you said, the kind of the kind of gear that you use. Yeah, I always say you don't really need, you know, the most expensive camera. Or Very, most true. Expensive camera. Very true. Very um, true. I don't, I could buy or afford right now uh, because this year went quite well a new camera. But mo most of the time when I ask this to myself, because many people or colleagues, ah, yeah, look, the new Sony or the new Red. Or, <laughs> No, the red comb or the one that goes in your end. But then I have to think about what I really need, you know. And I need uh, really something really practical that the battery don't last quite a lot, that don't yeah. use don't use like eight k or twelve k or yeah. a lot of uh, uh, archive because it's really you know difficult uh, later to you know have so many hard disk and then conversion and. Really, all the process uh, starting yeah. from a, from a huge camera is all the post process of post production is going to be more difficult and more heavy and more. So I'm a one it, woman, one woman. <laughs> sometimes I make this this uh, post when I say one woman filmmaker because sometimes I just do myself everything. I just light up the scene and sure, film yeah. and edit and post produce it. Uh, and sometimes I go with an assistant. When projects are bigger, like or have more more budget, I can you know make a team of a sure. of photography with a, a sound technician and assistant. Yeah, and assistant. yeah it, it depends on it depends on every job, and it's it's funny that you just mentioned that because I'm me and my team we're in the same boat. Whenever we have large production, we will rent out a Red or 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 an Alexa, but we're we're at the point now where exactly like you are literally going through the same process should we get a new camera i mean look at if you look at the black magic 6k for the price point that is a phenomenal purchase that is a it's, it's an amazing camera it, it, it you know the, the the color space is very similar to the ari so it's it's not like when i said about the two cams that ari has a certain look and feel to it very a lot more cinematic whereas red is a little bit more raw you know the 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 black magic is a lot more like ari whereas the then again, you look at the red and the Komodo and the price point for that. I mean, for six thousand dollars to get a red Super Thirty Five, that's a pretty good deal, you know, six, shooting six K. So it really depends on where 
where is this content going to live? Like you said, is, is the client requesting that because they really need to have it in 6K because it's going to go on a huge electronic billboard or w- whatever that is. Um, so it's just, it's just that question of, you know, what do you do with it? What, where is it going to, where is that final product going to live? And then not only that, if you go for a more expensive camera, it just comes with so many more attachments and additions that you have to purchase that they don't really throw that in there. So yeah, it might cost 24,000 to get or 30,000 to get an Alexa, but you have to buy this, 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 and this, and every mag is more expensive. So we're, we're still trying to decide if, it's, if we should just go for get another Sony and, and be very fluid with it with a Ronin or just get a Komodo and get a little bit more upscale. But that's, that's a tough call. I don't, I don't know. I'd love, to, I'd love to get other people's take on that if they're in the same boat, how they feel about the kind of gear that's coming out. And everything's getting cheaper. As the sensors are getting better. You can shoot in better light and they're getting cheaper. So um, I, saw in your, I saw in your work that you do a lot of drone work. Let's, let's touch on drone, yeah. drone work for just a little. I was just speaking of the drone because the same situation, the same evolution is with the drones with exactly drone. you remember at the beginning they were like huge you, you needed two yep. people to i still have it, it. <laughs> you still have it you have the, I still, there's no there's no point of selling it because right now you'll get nothing for it but i actually just bought myself that's why i want to get your opinion on it. i just got the new uh, air 2s which mm. i love i think it's absolutely fabulous and i'd love to get your take if you if you played around with it i'd love to get your take on that the sensor is really is really good, no? The, the... Yeah, the one it's the one inch Hossi sensor. It's 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 amazing. Um, the pixels are fatter, so it's not even though it's still a twenty megapixel um, photo that you get out of it. Because again, I do more of the photography side of things. Um, I know that the Mavic the, has a sixty. Uh, Hasselblad, Hasselblad lenses on that too, or not? It's not the. It's it's Hasselblad. a Hossi sensor. It's just the sensor. The, 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 the lenses don't change on that. So it's just, it's the Hossi sensor technology in it. Um, I know the Mavic does 64 megapixels, which is in, I think 64 or 47, one of the two, which is insane for a drone. But again, we're talking about the technology in terms of the pixel wells and how deep they are. I think the 21 is good, especially with the Hossel, Hossel blood sensor in it. But which drone, which drone do you have? I just, I just made a book, not made the book. I just participated in a book which you know is important the resolution of the of the picture. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because most of the time now we are using drone for filming for video that are ending up in YouTube or or, exactly. or yep. Instagram yep. or Facebook and they will go maximum 4K, no? But when it comes to picture, uh, you really need, you know, a lot of definition in in, in the picture in the resol- in the resolution of your drone and I had yeah. the, the previous one of yours, which is the DJI Mavic Pro Platinum. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so far, they are printing it, and the photographer, which is my friend, which is with, uh, who did the um, the photography, the book. The photography of the book, is really happy about it. He told me that the pictures are amazing, and I <laughs> I shoot from five hundred meter up there, uh, like a standard shot of a temple. Of yeah, in the desert of Peru, and the quality and the contrast, and the, you, you mm. can even see, you know, the like the sand that that is surrounding the temple. I mean, I'm I'm really, you know, so, sometimes sur- um, surprised by how yeah. far we can we can take this technology and it's only gonna it's only gonna get better i mean it's the sensor is only gonna get larger the battery life is only gonna get longer the drone itself i mean i i had to my old drone was in this gigantic pelican i took it all the way to madagascar it was a nightmare to carry it was a nightmare i mean the footage was great but it's just it's so much hassle whereas now i literally have it in a tiny little you know something no bigger than this you know, maybe a little yeah. bit bigger, obviously, but it's, it's little, it's, it's like manageable. Exactly. It's like a pouch. Um, and, and again, like we did, like we talked with the video, it depends where these photos are going to live. If they're just going to live in a book, I think that's brilliant and perfectly fine. Resolution will be fantastic. Obviously you can't blow it up, you know, a 48 by 72, you're going to see that breakdown in the quality of the file. So again, it depends. Is it, is it just in a book or on Facebook? It, it's perfect. It's absolutely brilliant. You don't have to hire a helicopter or do any of that. Um, for me, I need to, I print my images and I print them very large. So I don't oh, do any drone that. photography. Sorry? 
How large are your prints or how large? Um, so the largest I can print in one sheet is a 48 by 72 inches. Okay. So, so here's an example of one. That's a, that's a pretty large print of a fly. So they can get pretty large. And that's why for me, resolution is, is crucial. And that's why I don't, I don't do my photography from a drone if I know that I'm going to be printing it. Um, I, 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 I get a helicopter or a plane. Yes, that, that's that's correct. But um, it's really it's amazing. Also, uh, I don't know if the stability of, of this drone that you have now uh, changes between the, the this heavy helicopter yeah. you had before and now. Is it the same stability? You mean comparing the drone to what it's like in a helicopter or a plane? No, the, the drone you had before, which is like an helicopter. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I mean, the, he the heavy one is obviously going to be more stable in, in windy conditions. But from the research I've done on this new drone, they've improved the motors that it's meant to be almost as stable as, 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 the, pre as the one that I previously had, uh, which was a few years old. So it's a lot smaller. Um, the blades are a lot smaller, but it can it can still withstand that sort of the, the high amazing. winds. They're powerful. I, I'm I'm asking you this because I have been facing very strong winds in the yeah. northern part of Peru for this book because most of the um, of the location were uh, ruins or travel location, uh, touristical locations, and uh, they were really really they, they called it the 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 windy part of Peru and sometimes oh, I, I, I almost um, almost lost it because I pushed it I pushed the drone until the very end of the battery and when I wanted oh, to bring it, it back didn't have enough. to run, to run um, after him but uh, it really surprised me because all myself the wind were pushing me so when yeah. you really realize that the wind is pushing you yeah. The drone doing Can you imagine it? what it's what it's up at three hundred feet up in the air or four hundred feet? Yeah, yeah. They they are really powerful. Yes, I think that the technology is going towards that. No, um, but yes, once again, I think most of I remember a friend of my, two friends of mine. One friend of mine told me just stick with the camera that you that you more uh, dominate dominate, which I really like as an advice. No, because also um, photographer you usually say this no you know why i'm changing my camera if i still i'm still understanding it i'm still you know right like living with, with it and um or she doing great for me so you really have this connection with your camera it's really important yeah it, it is yeah and on the other hand another friend of mine which is a colorist in italy of, of movie industry he told me just buy, just buy the camera. The project give give you to buy. So if, if the pro there is the money for that camera, you can buy, it, of course, but not that come from from your pocket. So so I, think I, I agree. I agree with both of them because again, it depends on okay. depends on what it and depends what you're shooting. If you're shooting for a client and they, as budget for that, I would I would go for that. I would I would definitely get the camera that you feel is going to get you the best the best quality that your editor can then do. But being comfortable with your own gear. You know, you don't, don't feel pressured that you have to keep buying the latest gear all the time. I think a lot of people, you know, they see a new Sony like, oh, my God, it's amazing. It's the best thing yeah. ever. Well, they might make some changes to it. And is it better than the last one? Yes, it probably is a little bit better, but it's not going to drastically increase your, you know, your image quality per se. If your technique is bad, if your lighting is bad, if your, if your composition is bad, it doesn't matter what gear you have. It's still going to be a bad image. So. I always say, focus on the technique, focus on improving, keep making those mistakes, learn from those mistakes and slowly progress with your gear when you feel comfortable. I don't, I, I, I'm not a believer in overspending in gear just for the sake of overspending it or, or getting the well, latest gear. So I'm, I am also a professor, a teacher, and I'm doing a workshop now here in Peru in a photographic center, which is called the Centro de la Imagen, which is the the most uh, important institute of photography here, but yeah. I'm teaching them videography only with their phone. Exactly. Only with their yeah. iPhone. And it's amazing. Yeah. You, you have no idea. I'm really happy about my students, but every time it's a surprise. They don't know nothing about um, audiovisual language. And so I teach them the base and cinematography and the and the, sh the stills, the shoots, the um, yeah. movement yeah. of the camera, all the basic. And they just 
uh, leave the technique which they can you know improve uh, with, with right. practice right and with their creativity and that and a mobile phone they can do amazing amazing projects yeah and and yes. again it's the the technology think think of where we were five years ago in technology just for the iphone and where we are now just in terms of the resolution of the video in terms of the stability in terms of the low i think to me the biggest thing has been the low light performance I think the low light performance in some of these new iPhones are absolutely incredible. And I know Samsung has been doing it for a long time, but I, I, I'm shocked by that. I'm doing a project right now with, the, with an observatory, a huge telescope, and it's obviously in pitch black because you need to look up at the stars. And I'm taking photos in pitch black and they're coming out as if the whole thing is lit up. It, it's, quite, it's quite incredible. And plus now you can put them on gimbals and stabilizers. So again, I had someone tell me, Andre, go out and only use one lens the entire time. Like pick a prime and just stick to that and try and get the shots that you want with that one prime. And it seems very similar to what you're saying to your, to your students, just go out with one, you know, just, a, just an iPhone. Because if you can get, if you can master that, then you can master all the other attachments and the wonderful zoom lenses and sensors. But it's down to the core of understanding composition, understanding your subject, understanding lighting that is then going to decide. So How your end result is going to look. famous uh, film director who was very eager of only using a 50 millimeter. Yeah. <laughs> and all, all, the, all his uh, crew was going crazy, you know? Like, why not <laughs> use other lenses? No, I just want the 50 millimeter look. I mean, yeah. it's really impressive what, what you can do with just one, uh, one gear. But of course, uh, the, we have to be updated all the time, looking tech review, looking the new yeah. arrival, new camera, the Blackmagic 6K, which is interesting. I don't really like to work with Blackmagic because all the time, all the thing of the post-production really give me, you know, make me crazy, you know, to, you know, do the conversion, the really heavy. People either, the Blackmagic, yeah. I feel like people either love it or absolutely hate it. It's, it's there's no sort of in between. So it's, it's interesting that you're saying that again, as a, as a, as a videographer that I'm sure you like the, the look and the feel the of it, amazing. but it's exactly right. The, the color, the color profile is wonderful, but it's, it's just, there's just something about it for me. I don't like shooting Sony. I don't like the menus. I find the menus really frustrating to, to, to use but the, it makes wonderful images so i think it's the same with the black magic it looks phenomenal but just dealing with it my my, my guys don't particularly like using the black magic They're, if they could they would stick to re all the way but again we're talking different price points so it's i guess it's all relative i think it's it's important uh all the, always when you are a creator as you and me uh, to look at the project to to study to analyze it and then to yeah. think what look you want to give to the right you know? which kind of uh, tonality which kind of um yeah and and then you will decide which camera is for you no? for that specific project if you have this freedom of course yeah yeah working backwards sometimes is a bit i mean even imagine you're shooting a video all in black and white how is that going to affect exactly. you know if it's a monochrome how is that the tonality in, in the blacks and the whites, how is that, you know, the, that dynamic range, how is that gonna affect your whole look and what's the best camera for it? So, um, so if I- often, and, Oh, sorry. Often, no, 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 please, often, no, go ahead. They're asking to add um, uh, grain, to add the uh, noises because the, ah. the cameras are so- um, Flawless. So bright, so, so perfect, mm -hmm. so, uh, with so much details that they don't want so much details. So more and more the director are coming back to to the 35 millimeters or so, are coming yeah. back to the, to the old look because uh, now it's too much perfect. Unless you want to do a commercial or you want to see right. the, the little- Every, every little spec. Sometimes you just need to, to use some more vintage lenses or uh, vintage cameras or just uh, push up the ISO in yeah. order mm -hmm. to, 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 to find this look, you know. So See, it's a little bit controversy. But <laughs> personally, for, from a photography perspective, I, there is nothing I detest more than noise. I, I, I can't stand it. I, I just, it, there's something about the look. 
whenever I look at an image and I see a lot of noise in it, unless it's absolutely intentional for black and whites, for example, it can give you that texture and that look and feel that works for that particular project. But for my 99% of the stuff that I do, I just, that's the first thing I take away. I just can't stand noise. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I like shooting on a phase because it just, you know, shooting at 50 ISO, I try and stick to 50 ISO as much as I can. I don't even try and push it above 800 ISO. Um, but that being the case. It depends where you started with the analogical camera or digital camera, which generation are you? I started, I started with digital. Digital, that's why. Yeah. Because yeah. you started yeah. all your mental and your look, because all it our is. eyes are like um, an art disc. They are going, uh, you know, they are keeping inside information, information, information of what we see. And if we yeah. see, we saw all the time perfect images, you know, uh, really with no noises. We are getting used to it. And so we want yeah. to reproduce this. So it's all about uh, your cultural and, you know, grow uh, luggage. That is, yeah. I think. no, I think, I think, I think you're right. And, all, and, and there's something that we haven't even touched upon, which we're going to need another few hours and, and more alcohol, a lot more alcohol, which is just getting into the whole social media aspect of it, of that. Like you said, the, the perception that everything is stunning and beautiful and fake, if you want to call it that, and, you know, how does that influence the kind of gear that you use? Um, I, I don't know if that's for me. I think even if I was shooting on film originally and I had the appreciation for film, which I, which I do, I, I don't say, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having grain in it. It's just not, there is, for my projects, I really want my images to be exactly as I saw them. But for them to be clean, I don't. I will never add noise to an image. If I wanted to add noise, I'd use a different technique for it. Um, but if I may ask a question, because we are talking about the photography side of things, how do you integrate photography with your video projects? Because obviously, for me, that goes hand in hand. A lot of times, even though I'm primarily photography, I always want to do the video, whether it's BTS or a sort of a mini documentary. How do you how do you do it on your end, being a videographer and trying to integrate photography into it? Yes, it's uh, most of the time it comes naturally. The, the clients nowadays they want the full package. They're yeah, not exactly. Looking that was, that's what I wanted to ask. Documentary or just for uh, you know an event, a uh, video event. No, they want the full package, and so I, I just adapted to the to the evolution and I started doing. Uh, I was originally a photographer then i started specializing in videography and then flying drones and then editing and all came together you have to and, right right and because i think it's uh, i like to be versatile to do the most i can because i like to 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 be myself which one who shoot or decide which composition so at the beginning, I was maybe just uh, having uh, more uh, collaborators to, to do yeah. a specific job. But if I can, I prefer to do it myself because I like, I mean, I like my eyes. I mean, I like my my point of view. So if I can do it um, by myself, I prefer to do both shooting, do you, and photography and filming. Do you, like do, you, do you feel like you... Struggle is not the right word to use. I apologize. I can't think of a better one. But do you feel like there is a, there's a give and take when you're taking a photo and you're thinking of the composition and the feel that you want out of that photo as opposed to almost the same environment, the same, the same shot, but obviously from a moving perspective? Because you're my, it's, it's a complete mind shift, right? You, everything is, you're, you're telling a story in a different way. Do you, do you, have you ever struggled with that or do you find that to be yeah, quite a smoothless? At the beginning, I was uh, struggling because um, most of my content or my clients want, wanted travel, travel um, contribution, travel images. So I was yeah. like, oh, I'm missing this because I'm making this picture. This bird is right, flying exactly. away, or this boat <laughs> is flying away, or whatever that was moving that they could not yeah. catch in that particular moment. But if uh, the project is different and I can take the time to do both, uh, I don't struggle because I enjoy it, no? I enjoy to do both uh, content. What would you choose? If you could choose one, where do, you, where do you lean? Are you leaning more on the video side of things or photography? Or is that, is that a really bad question to ask? 
Yes, I, I was just thinking about it yesterday when I was <laughs> in my year chat because it's like it's like when I when you are a multiple um, sportman, no? When you practice more one kind of sport, you are like uh, putting aside uh, putting aside the other one, so right, right. More eager on one, and no, your your like results are maybe different. better, yeah, different, different. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if I focus a lot on filmmaking, uh, photography part is like a little bit forgotten. On secondary. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, so, so to- Right now to I'm doing more filmmaking maybe, but it's not that true because you see, uh, Monday I- It can change. Tuesday I fly a drone filming for a commercial and yeah. the day after I shoot a commercial, a photography commercial, so. It depends. And the same client told me, let's do a documentary. I want to do the, he wanted to go in the beach um, nearby, three hours from here. And there is this uh, fisherman, because it's about the plastic. Mm -hmm. It's the World Plastic Day, you know? So Adidas uh, is uh, participating in, in donations and doing activity uh, to help uh, to raise awareness about this problem, which is a very, you know, a huge problem of the plastic. Sure. The and uh, we were supposed to go and film this, uh, these uh, fishermen that they are like mm, trying to change their habits and bringing back their plastic from fishing and just give it to yeah. a foundation and the foundation like recycle. And, recycle. and mm -hmm. they use these pieces of plastic to do um, Adidas products. But at the yeah. end, uh, we were run off time and you know, always things changes. And so like, no, let's not do video, let's do photography. So everything changed. So it also depends yeah. on the, I think it's really um, depending on, on, on the situation and on the project. Do you I don't feel see you anymore. Oh, <laughs> I, did I just, I oh, you my video just, camera. my video just changed. Um, do you feel like, um, do you feel like your, your cinematography work has made you a better photographer or do you feel your photography has made you a better videographer? <laughs> I got you on that one. You preferred it, huh? Because this, this one is, is uh, yes, I think um, both words are word are um, complementing uh, him itself. No, I mean the photography and the, the filmmaking word is, is a little bit ma more complex, no? Because uh, your team yeah, is bigger. Yeah. The team is bigger, the production is bigger, there is the pre-production, the production, post-production. Photography, mm -hmm. okay, you can have the pre-production as well. Maybe you can do everything with a little team, with a uh, little team. Uh, yeah. But cinematography and filmmaking has a lot of aspects, no? That you have to take care of. There is also the a lot sound. of moving parts. Not only mm -hmm. the image, the sound, the image, the colors in post-production. The catering, Talent. the permits, <laughs> location <Yeah>. scouting, <laughs> location scouting. It's just, yeah. it, there's and so much. Most of the time I am doing my script. Yeah. I also prepare the script. So you're, you really are a one person, you're a one person show. <laughs> yeah, but not for, not for movie or, yeah, you know, sure. commercial, just for, uh, Okay, important project. Now I'm just starting uh, with the World Food Program, mm -hmm. a new, new big project. Uh, we go all around uh, tomorrow is my first meeting. Uh, we will go around Peru to, to film the emergency situation of the COVID, uh, yeah. with donation of food and uh, implementation for, the, for preventing the spread of it. But in yeah. four area of, of Peru, no? So it's like uh, like twelve videos, something like that, and and photography as well. So there I will go with uh, two or three people, and I will be like directing and shoot more concentrated in in directing and shooting, and maybe yeah, uh, bring along a photographer. See, because sometimes I prefer I prefer smaller set, smaller teams. I feel like you can, you know, I've, I've done big shoots. I've done, you know, large, large teams and all that kind of prepping that needs to go along with it. But I, I almost prefer a project like you just said, where you just go with 
two of your two of your people that you know very well they they know you they know how you work you can be they can be very um uh, it, it doesn't feel like it has that pressure on you as much just because you're in a more comfortable environment and you can just be more fluid with what you're trying to do and get a little bit more, even though, yes, you, you, you're taking cues from the client, but um, I, it can just be more malleable, I think. So personally, I prefer, I prefer shoots along those lines. But um, so you've it's answered a, what's... It's a, it's a big uh, trade-off. Um, sometimes I'm like, oh, yes, I would like to be part of this uh, movie, you know, to, to be this yeah. director of photography or be part of the camera team. But then uh, it's a long... In, you are really sacrificing a lot. Yeah. You are learning a lot, but you are suffering, sacrificing a lot when you are in big projects because you are just focusing on your special task you're one you person in a hundred, a thousand. Yeah, yeah. You don't have so much freedom, but on the other hand, you can learn a lot. Yeah. So I did I did this at the beginning, you know, I, I tried to learn as much as I could in the set and in the film industry and the commercial industry. But then I realized that I am much more happy with my clients and my projects. That that brought me uh, until Nigeria, Nigeria, uh, oh, nice. Nigeria, France. I mean, I mean, yeah. I managed to do a lot of things without being part of a film industry or you know a really huge project. But, but, but like you said, just it's project, just with small team. Right, so, and but also like you said, and, and again for anyone that's listening as well, it really is that trade off. I think it's important to. It's, it's crucial to do both because like you said, you're going to learn a lot that you may not even realize until your next shoot or the shoot afterwards that you, you, you sort of remember, oh, that we did this and it didn't work. And why, why didn't it work? Okay, we're going we're gonna to make adjustments for it. So it's just part of that progress and, and your, your creative progress to, to keep learning, keep making mistakes, keep trying to improve and get better. So if you just did one thing, then that's, I'm sure it's wonderful and it's great, but you you're just not going to be exposed to some of the things that's going to push you further as a, as a creative. So I, I, I'm sure you encourage everyone to try and explore as much as they can until they really find their niche and, and, you know, just, just sort of keep at it, especially now more than ever with COVID. Uh, I struggled to find creativity. Um, did you struggle at any point during this time or were you kind of swamped and busy with clients where they, they still wanted you even during COVID? Did you, did you slow down at all? Yes, no, I, that's why I, in the presentation I, I had prepared if whether the internet was working, something I did uh, during the first part of the pandemic, uh, because there is no limitation no, of creativity, you always have to push yourself even when you feel depressed and you right. are in, Absolutely. in your house, so uh, I did two projects, one was just, I, I was allowed here in Peru to go out just to buy food with my bicycle or by foot, so yeah. like in a neighborhood, you, you could mm -hmm. even go from a neighborhood to another. You just wow. needed to stick in the area, no? So it was every time I was going out, I was with my camera, like filming <laughs> a shot of, of life of people like queuing or, and they yeah. did a little um, documentary about it that uh, a lot of people uh, loved it because I shared it with my friends and people that live it, was living this situation in other country. And yeah. I, I was really happy to have done it because on the other, on another routine day, I wouldn't think about that, no? But look what, what I could create by being... It's a, right. No? And, it's, and it's, a unique, it's a unique situation that, who knows, may never happen again, or it can happen again in five years' time. Who knows? You, 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 you did it, you, you saw the opportunity, and you went for it. I think, I think that's a lot of people were too scared to even do that. So I, I think exactly. that's great that you were able to do no, that. I was so sure. happy. You know, I was like, yes, I can <laughs> like half an hour or one hour or whatever it took me to to do the shop yeah and uh it was crazy to see also the face you know i was like doing close up and all in slow motion because i had no stabilizer because you're not allowed to film you know i was like doing right. one, with one hand i was cycling on the other i was with my camera trying to <laughs> quite crazy but i made it and uh, and the result is there because it's really emotional it's what i was feeling and what people were feeling they were looking it's, at it's me, raw like, right scared like 
old lady, uh, like if somebody was helping this old lady in doing shopping, other were having plastic things because we still didn't have the mask at the beginning here. So it was yeah, really it's old, crazy. so much vulnerability of the people and also um, uncertainty about the future and fears, uh, all of this. Uh, <laughs> no, just fear for the, yeah, exactly. Fear for the unknown. We didn't know at the time what was happening, but hopefully slowly we're coming out of it. Um, hopefully things will improve in Peru and you continue to do more work, not only in Peru, but internationally and same, same for us as well here as, as more vaccines are coming through, but, um, it, we're, we're coming up to the, uh, to the hour mark. And, um, I just wanted to give the opportunity for everyone that's still here with us. If they have any questions for you, let's see if they can, uh, if, if we, if we can throw some out there. Someone's asking how they can contact you for work. They would like to know your, uh, your social media. So we will, we will make that available for, for everyone to be able to see that. So Thank you, you obviously had an impact on one, on definitely one person for sure. Um, if anyone has any questions, please shoot them through. We have Johnny on, who's a, he's on the back end of things. He's checking all the questions. Um, if we don't hear anything else, I will, uh, I will ask if you can, um, while we wait for that, if you can choose one piece of gear, you're about to go in the jungle in Peru. I've been, I, by the way, I've been to Peru a long time ago. It was really? 30, 12, year, 12 years ago, it must've been. And I loved it. It was absolutely fabulous. Uh, I would love to go back. Um, but if you were going, let's say in the jungle and you can take one piece of gear with you, what would you choose? Which what? lens? One, what you can either video or photo and then you, you can choose one lens. What would you choose? <laughs> A Versace one. I mean, uh, definitely, definitely would be a Versace. Versace, not not um, a steel a steel lens, no. So uh, 35, 70, 24, 105. I wouldn't go for um, uh, big heavy zoom. Big heavy zoom because otherwise I would, you know, a closed uh, shoot. I couldn't make it. Even photography or or filmmaking is the same. 50 millimeter I only uh, would do portrait and everybody and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, deep depth of field. It would be out, out of focus. And if I would go for a wide angle, okay, that would be interesting, especially in the jungle. But I couldn't, uh, you know, shoot the bird or the or the, yeah. uh, the animal that is going out of the of the dolphin. Some yeah. I had the opportunity to see the the pink dolphins the pink dolphins that's right yeah they're very rare uh no? because they live in because they're in the pink dolphins they live in fresh water if i'm not mistaken right aren't they in the are they the ones that live in the fresh water in fresh they water, go between the... they go between both the fresh and salt is that right or am i thinking of the yes, crocodiles but they live in the uh, near Iquitos, um, in the river i don't know if it was fresh water it was polluted I... that's for sure but uh, <laughs> it is a I, I think same minor work you know of, i think uh, that's what's really special about those pink dolphins is that they they have the ability to go from the from salts to fresh because they basically they, they're amongst the, mon the, the mangroves it's yes, when it's, it's when it, they, we're going to a part where the mountain it's virgin it's not you know no, no human are, are there yeah to do some of uh, the fishing to film some of the fishing for the ministry of education here and um, and suddenly we see oh, the dolphin. This is the dolphin. <laughs> very rare for them as They're well. Very rare, so, yeah. yeah. So we started to film, and it was really amazing, you know, to to have yeah. the possibility to have this shoot. And also during the pandemic, uh, some of my clients uh, asked me to edit, <laughs> and 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 they yeah. had a project that they had to promote, you know, to make like a video of this. Italian entrepreneur here that is uh, selling products at all the hotel of the Peru and they were all closed. So he oh. wanted us to say something like, okay, let's hold on, we will be back and showing the best part of Peru. And fortunately I had all my archives, you know, or, or video footage yeah. of all over Peru. So thanks to that, I could make the video. Otherwise it would have been impossible without moving it, from- It would be 10 seconds long. <laughs> Absolutely. From my, from my home but yes it's that, that that is 
crazy. And um, we cannot see my reel, but maybe I can share some pictures just to close. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, um, go for it. What a shame that the the video is not. We'll we'll get it uploaded so people can uh, people can click on it. Or they yeah. can just look you up. I, they can look you up and find you on Vimeo. I saw that uh, you know you have a you have a majority of your reels are up on Vimeo. Okay, cool, great. I have no idea how to. I have to open all the all the. Just impressive. go to. Yep, share screen. Yeah, okay. No, because picture by picture is is not. Uh, oh it, yeah, It'll, it's. Can you see it? Yep, there we go. I can see it. Yeah, great. So this was the previous shooting we did, I did with Adidas in this like um, uh, lagoon at uh, 4,500 4, meters of altitude. That's awesome. That's awesome, the color of the, no? It's crazy. Yeah. And these girls as well running over there. This is all the way up we did. So I, I take advantage of the, of the going up to do that. A close up of him. It was yep. about their their products, no? The the new the new hiking the, shoes, yeah. And he had brought everything, his bicycle. So we, he's a, a sportman here. So yep. we played a lot with that. But it's amazing, no? The scenery. Oh, it's just incredible. Yeah, Peru's Peru's. I, I've been very fortunate. I've traveled a lot, but Peru is definitely one that I really. I, I never like to go back to the same place because there's so many that I want to see, but Peru is definitely one that I would love to go back. Um, I, we did the five, yeah, five a.m. Machu Picchu, watching the sunrise. Which again, I know it's, I know it's traditional and whatever, but it was still a pretty incredible, pretty no, incredible. No, it's amazing. You have to go there if you haven't been. I mean, it's part of the well, going to just Rome, go and you don't see the Coliseum. Uh, right. And the hike up to Mount um, um, Wano Pichu was ugh, mm. with my with my huge bag. That was a nightmare. This was the first job ever I did here in Peru with the National Geographic. It was this Spanish production, and we mm -hmm. went in these uh, ruins that are called Chavin de Guantar, and we did almost all the movie and the picture of the movie under these tunnels. Like it was really oh, crazy. Wow. Really that's crazy. that's oh and it was during COVID too really, really and it was this uh all um this prehistoric uh, call, uh pre um in kai priest. culture pre mm -hmm. kai culture this is the um, the priest yes the priest so they were reproducing all the story you know that was oh wow great. really an amazing production and this is a very famous culture that normally is with plastic with uh, glass and they had to yeah, covering. It, we had to ask the permit to the um, that's incredible the so that's one of the advantage of our work no to be able to enter in this like, yeah. really difficult uh, and uh, really inaccessible sites that are amazing and have the privilege to film them this is in yeah, the absolutely. desert near lima and this is a, a real um, how you call it Snake, two real oh, on the top, on yes, the head, on the head, two real ones. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah the, the culture, the culture there is just culture is so wonderful, and the history and and the traditions that they have is really stunning. Yeah, really, so so much to discover here. I know. I we can we can we need another two three hours just to just to discuss some of the projects that you've that you've done, but no, unfortunately I mean, we. <laughs> unfortunately we've come to the end and um i just want to say thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to join us i really appreciate it and i admire your work and i i can't wait to see the new work that you're uh, that you're about to be doing please please share it with us send it send it in because uh i think it's important work that you do and um especially now during covid like i said trying to be as creative as we can and keeping busy to stay mentally sane uh is is really so crucial so just wanted to say thank you for joining us and uh, we'll, we'd love to have you back. Whenever you have some new products and new stuff that you have worked on, we'd love to have you uh, discuss it. Thank you, thank you. And let me know if you try the Black Magic 6K, how it goes. Oh, we will. I think we, we might be going, we might be leaning towards the Komodo, quite frankly.
I just that that that's super thirty five. A better choice. Yeah, it's just flexible. It's 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 a red, and I know people are on two sides of it, but it's it's I think it's a better quality. I think it's a better sensor, um, especially for some of the work that we're going to be doing. So we're building a whole we're building building a whole kit with it with an SR two and scaffolding for cars because I want to do some car to car stuff. But this isn't about me. This is about you, and um, we'll we'll definitely uh, we'll discuss gear next time for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And have no worries. Therefore, let everybody who wants to speak with me just send me a message and I will be happy to. Yeah, to and, and we'll provide all your social media and your website and any, everything else that you'd like for us to, uh, to send out to everyone so they can, uh, they can look for you and they can hire you. And that's how the world goes around and we make, uh, we make more beautiful stuff. So, thank you. All right. To the of stop. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> thank you, guys. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Till the next one. Next one's in a few weeks' time. We'll we'll uh, we'll get you updates on uh, on the next one coming up. So stay tuned. Thank you.